I'm Narelle Todd. And I'm Essie Susan Smith. We are the self-publishing author and marketing duo that has sold over 2 million books. But we didn't start out knowing how to sell books. Fast forward past many failed promotions and a lot of lessons learned, you will see how we went from self-publishing newbies to hitting the New York Times bestsellers list and making the USA Today bestsellers list 19 times and counting. We created the Get My Book Out There podcast to give you simple yet effective marketing strategies to increase readership and book sales so you know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, as well as some tips for staying mentally and physically well. Let's get started. And we are going to talk today about Goodreads. So Goodreads is either an author's friend or its foe, it seems. There's such strong opinion about Goodreads. And um, I'm in there as well with a strong opinion. Um, Susan, you have a strong opinion on Goodreads? Yeah, it's literally like, what the? We need that like beep. <laughs> I come from the, the aspect that Goodreads is a really great place for authors to connect with readers. So I actually like it as a place for authors to show up. But I also see that there's like this really strong opinions in there from readers. And you know, it can be so confronting as an author if you go in and you see people just kind of ripping people to shreds and books and yes you know you have to really have a thick hide so I will mention that uh, up first but I also just want to say if you can kind of move past that or perhaps don't even go and look at those sorts of things what I'm going to do is give you some three tips that you can still show up in Goodreads without necessarily showing up for the drama that can be involved in some of the groups uh, in there so hopefully you'll be okay with that one. Here are my three um, be good, feel good tips to use Goodreads. So firstly, uh, if you have a blog that you, you know, on your website, connect that to Goodreads so that whenever you update your blog on your website, it feeds into Goodreads as well. You know, that's one way to show up. You can do, it's obviously an automatic uh, sort of process. So you, in effect, don't even have to do anything more than just release a blog on your blog post. But what it does show is, A, it kind of um, pings to readers in Goodreads who are following you that there's some action. So they will you know, potentially go and read it. And even though it's not new content, it's still content that they may not have seen by going to your website. I do have to admit that they do have a blog section so that as an author, I can go in there and I can, once I find it, because I always lose it, and then I have to go look for it again. But once you find it, they have a place where you can actually write blogs. And I've noticed that when I've written blogs, and I literally write about things like, you know, why I chose this character or why I wrote this book or what this character meant to me on a personal note, you know, just dealing with certain thing aspects and readers really respond to it. I always get, you know, that they, they like my blog that I've written. So it's one of the things I should do more often. And as an author, I'm kind of ashamed that I haven't. But I have written quite a few blogs on there and it's always been very, very positive feedback when I have done that. Absolutely. And and that's tip number two is to actually go into Goodreads, into that blog section. So you'll find it on your author profile in Goodreads and actually create original content. And Mm -hmm. typically that is around your characters. So, you know, readers want to know more about the character, maybe some more backstory or where are they now? So if you ever are kind of thinking, oh, I don't know anything to write about, give people an update on what your characters are up to. Um, You know, they're imaginary, so you can have them up to anything really. (laughs) But it's that sense of just reconnecting, you know, readers with the characters again. You know, they want to know what's going on. So share some of that with them. Sh- yes, yeah, share what's happening for you. It could be about a work in progress. You know, there's all sorts of things, you know, like a hundred to maybe 200 words. It doesn't even have to be long. But that's just true. some, yeah, just some original content about you, about your characters in your books. And that keeps the engagement uh, going with your readers definitely your blog so your blog post which is stuff you've already posted on your website um, is the first one and then the blog within goodreads itself which is original content that you're going to be put putting together 
um, that's really important as well. Um, the other thing is to also show readers what you're reading. You know, readers are really interested to see what readers, uh, what authors are reading. And once again, this can be an automatic sort of thing where in your Kindle, you simply just need to um, put on the tag uh, in there, you know, what you're currently reading. You just flip the switch over and that will show up on your Goodreads account. You don't even have to necessarily go into Goodreads. So, you, you know, you won't be tempted to go and read any reviews or get caught up in some of the drama that can happen in there. But what it does is just refreshes your account in Goodreads, lets people know what you're reading. You know, when you're finished, um, you might want to comment on books that you like. That's potentially a place some people don't like to go in, in leaving reviews. I would just say if you are going to leave a review, make sure it's a one a book that you like. Don't necessarily leave negative reviews because you don't want to get caught up in that whole, oh, they left the negative review for that person and I really like them. And, you know, then that whole kind of thing gets going. So just leave reviews. And I've done that you know. where I've gone in, not not the negative reviews, but I've gone in there and I, I've seen, like I've read, read some books and I remember this one got bad reviews and I was thinking, I really love the book. And I love the characters and I thought the writing and the world building and everything was just spot on. And so I, you know, I went in there and I, I broke it all down. You know, this is why I really enjoyed the book. Why? And I'm looking at it, you know, from a reader's perspective, but I thought from an author's, I was thinking, oh my God, this is a really good author as well. Yes. So, yeah. you know, I think it's important to share that. I've seen, I, I think one of my frustrations with Goodreads as an you know as a reader and an author is that it's not always intuitive where to find everything so i have to kind of struggle you know to find where to find the blog after i've written one then it's like okay you know it seems like it's in real small letters you know new blog post or something yeah. so it's not you know as intuitive for me um one of the things i do like and i don't know if you're going to mention it but they allow you to answer questions so i went in there and they had a bunch of questions and i answered them but then readers can ask you questions and one of the frustrating thing is i don't always get a notification it's yes. like it's hit or miss but when i do get a notification i try to go in there and i try to answer the, the questions and sometimes i'll go in there and i'll find a question that i didn't get um, a ping for and you know i had to, it suddenly pops up and it's like okay let me go in and answer that even if it's months later i'll still answer it because somebody else may have that same question yeah yeah, I, I find the Goodreads app on my iPhone is better for notifications than say relying on an email from them. Yes, <clears throat> I liked so one, I, I liked it when I was getting emails because then I could go in and click on it and then it would allow me to answer it. But you know, don't be afraid to go in there because then other readers get notifications that you answered this question and they'll yeah. come in and they'll like the fact that you answered it. You know, and so it's same, another connection with them. Yes, the same with your organic blog post or the one that you actually write in Goodreads, they also send out notifications to people who follow you whenever you do one of those. So once again, you're just keeping front of mind um, of people or a notification on, on their phone, how they've chosen to get their information. And since uh, Amazon has bought Goodreads, we're seeing a lot more kind of interaction between reviews on Goodreads and reviews that show up on Amazon itself. So that's also something to have a think about. You know, if you oh, show up more on Goodreads. You know something else I noticed? What? When I made the USA Today bestsellers list, that uh -huh. the, the comments, the review comments came from Goodreads. Yes. Yeah, they feed in from there. Yeah. So if you end up making the bestsellers list, then the the review comments generally come from Goodreads. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And oh, there was one other thing and it just went out of my mind. But it was good. What was it? <laughs> oh, I don't for a know. moment. <laughs> See, you can tell when she's been around me too much. <laughs> anyway, I highly recommend Goodreads to you as an author. You just need to be mindful of where you go uh, in there in order just to maintain, you know, good mental health. So use some of the tips that I've shown, you know, that we talked about here today. So make sure that you connect your website blog to Goodreads. 
leave some actual blog posts within Goodreads itself. So, you know, write some content, uh, follow up on messages that you get from people uh, in Goodreads and, um, you know, turn on what you're reading on your Kindle and that feeds then into Goodreads so that readers can actually see what you're reading and you're enjoying. And once again, that makes, you know, that connection between reader and author uh, stronger uh, as well because, you know, we like, readers like to see what authors are reading and and what they're enjoying yeah as a bonus tip don't forget to answer the questions that they have you know because they have questions for authors where goodreads automatically has those don't be shy about answering those and then turn on so that readers can ask you questions so that you can go in and you can respond to them because the more interaction you get then the more readers are going to want to follow you Exactly, exactly. So if you haven't already, turn on, get, get into Goodreads, make sure your author profile is set up and then make sure that all your books are assigned to your author profile so that readers can come you know, to you um, and they can just see everything that you've written um, and it's an easy stop for them as well. So if nothing else today, you've learned how you can use Goodreads uh, to your advantage. Yes, to be visible in there just by doing a few steps a lot of it is automatic, so you know, that's not going to um, add to your day, but it just aids in you being seen and being in more places, which of course helps with selling books. Excellent. <laughs> well, I hope you found this useful for how to use Goodreads uh, in a good way. Thanks, everyone. Bye, everyone. See you. Hey, thanks for joining us today. You know we've got way more information we want to share with you to increase your book sales, so please come and join me at facebook.com get my book out there.